Good afternoon, and sorry uh, as I could not be there uh, yesterday. This is a joint uh, pr um, paper uh, that teams up uh, linguists of English, uh, someone working with speech, and Taylor Arnold, who is a statistician, and who's uh, helped us a lot with the uh, computer programming of this um, analysis. Um, I'm going to try to explain how working with key logs can be useful for the investigation uh, of graphemes, but then uh, I'll make, uh, uh, if not amends, uh, at least uh, an uproar as I'll try to define <laughs> graphemes, a very complex question that has been somehow uh, eschewed or avoided uh, this morning at least. I'll try to explain why, as a speech person, I think it's very interesting to investigate key logs and how the analysis of the very sequence of letters can be of interest, and potentially how this kind of data can be of interest to people working in the field of graphematic at large. Uh, if you're not too familiar with this system, I'll give a few examples of the kind of software that allows us to get this kind of data. I'll show what kind of data we are working on, somehow very different from standard uh, material or data uh, we've listened to today. Uh, as one of the reviewers pointed out, investigating uh, duration uh, raises a certain number of questions, so I'll try to give, if not an account, at least uh, an observation of all the things that have been done in the field. This is brand new for me as a speech person, and apparently a certain number of work uh, works have been published in the domain. I'll try to give a very quick overview uh, of this uh, importance. And then I'll try to explain why, uh, as a linguist of English, I would like to know more in this uh, domain. I would like to show that it's useful for uh, understanding a certain number of workings of language. And this is the field of the learner corpus research, which I very briefly uh, introduced. So that's more or less my line, and uh, somehow peripheral to the uh, uh, theme of the conference, so I'll try to wrap up my <laughs> observations with this kind of data in connection to the core uh, of the uh, conference. So I actually realized, and it's a shame because I'm supposed to be a linguist of English, that there is a strong ambiguity in terms of graphemes between an American representation and a, uh, a European representation, and again, uh, I've been guilty of uh, European centrism. Uh, since, as a phonologist by trade, I was mostly aware of the uh, British sense. So, uh, in a nutshell, the <laughs> discrepancy or the gap is summed up uh, on this slide. You could say that for people, uh, graphemes is mostly a letter. Therefore, key logs indeed have to do with graphemics as such in a more... Uh, uh, elaborate sequence. You need to understand graphemes in relation to the phonological system, and this, this makes the use of key logs more problematic because you have to say and to state which uh, they are. So up to a point, I'm only relevant if you uh, adhere to this definition of graphemes, and I uh, will give a certain number of results. Nevertheless, we've tried to investigate the status of Grapheme as being the correspondence of phonemes. We've investigated the, we've, we have investigated the position of TH as a potential candidate for a grapheme being associated to a phoneme. And I'll give at the end <laughs> the results of this uh, uh, investigation. Uh, very unfortunately, uh, there's a French school of phonology who has investigated uh, the spelling system in relation to the stress system of English, and that's been developed as the Gear School, and it was a kind of family meeting yesterday. It's very unfortunate that the two uh, conferences clashed because there is a tradition within this school of graphophonemics, namely trying to predict the value of phonological vowels on the basis of grapheme <laughs> and graphemic vowels. And there's indeed an attempt at defining stress patterns on the basis of the whole spelling systems. So that was very unfortunate. But again, say, thank you again for organizing this uh, very interesting uh, conference. Uh, as a linguist of English, I have an interest uh, uh, in corpora, and I'll try to uh, take the stand that we should take into account uh, spoken data and written data. 
Uh, and there's uh, probably um, more than meets the eye in this kind of uh, increasing divorce, which is um, mostly based on techni technological reasons. Speech is now analyzed with speech software with many um, 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 inputs from phonetics, and that uh, drives uh, the uh, research question uh, uh, rather uh, difficult. So the reason for sh uh, showing a parallel between the written domain and the spoken domain is that with key logs we have at last time correlates exactly in the same way as we have duration that can be measured with speech. So uh, the idea is to investigate how we build on constituents and Martin has uh, very uh, uh, clearly explained the kind of lower scale of the prosodic hierarchy. How, what kind of constituents do we have? And uh, we have segments also called phonemes for the analysis of some languages, Japanese is one, some phonologists would acknowledge the existence of mora. Those mora are grouped into syllables and these syllables are grouped into fit. This is the organization that Martin uh, displayed and, and explained. In terms of the analysis, uh, there's something that corresponds to a textual structure we're all familiar with that goes from letter to word and to sen sentences and paragraphs. That's the kind of textual structure we're very familiar. I would like to suggest that uh, dealing with key logs, we have a more complex picture or rather simplified version of this uh, constituents, and my research question is to try to establish the various research, the various constituents, levels of constituents that we may acknowledge. So, very strictly speaking, if you accept this shortcut, uh, the phoneme may correspond to a character, or if you accept the American definition, the letter may correspond to a character, a key punched in uh, the computer. Uh, we all have a graphic representation of what the word is, so there's nothing wrong here. But the very sequences of words, the status of chunk, is more or less what we try to investigate. So that is more or less what we try to do. We are a bit higher in the terms of the prosodic hierarchy than the previous talk uh, we had. Uh, so basically you can find some examples of uh, key logs on the internet. Two kinds of format are available, either XML or CSV uh, files. Typically, and that somehow limits the analysis for linguists, some tasks have been used to collect uh, the data. And in the first generation, they were mostly about uh, cryptography, and they basically asked uh, people to type in their key logs, their, their passwords, and their logins, with the assumption that a given speed would be, uh, would be unique to a given person. You have a specific ways of typing these very frequent uh, sequences. And this is a kind of data set that has been produced. Um, Within a psycholinguistic perspective, a certain number of data sets have been produced by asking people to type in specific sentences. I'll give examples of them. And what we have used um, so far is a data set based on essay writing. So students in an American university having to write about Excel and what you can do with Excel in a limited amount of time with the same kind of keyboard within the classroom. There are limitations to the uh, type of data sets uh, we intend to develop and to uh, work with more specifically um, uh, tailored uh, uh, to our needs uh, tasks, such as um, 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 specific uh, task description, uh, as is the case with learner corpus data um, uh, collection. So this is the simple model of the um, uh, rather terse or hostile uh, presentation. So you can see the user who passed the test. The uh, se several users had several tests. And for each key corresponding to a character, you have the time when you press the key and the time when you release the key. And there's a certain number of um, inter-key intervals that are taken into account. That's more or less the time stamps. 
the duration that is associated to our graphemes. Typical data sets include information about uh, speakers, and you have the sentence that the speakers have to type, French actress Juliette Binoche declare the festival open. Then you have all the duration corresponding to the timestamps. Then you have all the keys that were actually pressed in. And of course, if there are mistakes, you get the backspace key, which corresponds to the uh, full text. And the data also uh, compares the input, the sentence that uh, people had to type, and the output. So this is the very uh, uh, terse uh, data that has been uh, used so far. Uh, part of our research question with writing essays is to try to analyze where do uh, Speakers, typists stop and pause to think, and you can see that there are some sections where they stop typing, and you have some kind of bursts of types. Part of our research question is to try to analyze the linguistic constituents that arise here. Uh, among the various key log programs that are around, uh, input log is probably the most complete as evidenced in this uh, benchmark. Uh, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to insist on the various uh, points that somehow make this linguistic investigation even more complicated. The first point made by psycholinguists is that, of course, uh, it's also uh, something that takes into account your psychomotor skills. And, of course, it's not only about linguistic knowledge skills, but there are uh, potential um, um, problems in terms of short-term working memories, but also constraints working on long-time short-term uh, memories. That's a point made by various uh, research. There are several models trying to represent how graphemes is stored in the mind of speakers and how that relates to the various uh, ways uh, of uh, typing. Uh, one of the uh, interesting aspects, maybe more relevant to this conference, is the fact that there seems to be a specific kind of reaction time and a longer uh, uh, duration required for words in onset position, so that may be a form of a take-home message. Words, word initial keys correspond to a certain duration, so there may be a specific status, uh, as is clear here. Yes, there are a certain number of psycholinguistic motors, and the keyboard plays a role in the analysis, as one of the reviewers pointed out. Uh, there's an uh, ERC-founded project that nevertheless showed that some uh, uh, typists may not follow this canonical distribution of keys and still manage to be very, very fast. The typical duration analysis is the subtraction of the press time I mentioned. It's called the interval key. And part of the research question is to see what is the different peaks. And up to a point, this peak in density here is the kind of the word um, uh, pause. And sometimes they take more time and they need more time for this. And that's the second uh, peak. Uh, the fact that you have learned to type it may not be sufficient uh, to account for the fact that you're the fastest uh, at typing. So you can see here the touch typists, those who have learned actually to type using the 10 fingers. But you can see all the orange uh, typists that do better just because they have uh, uh, specific strategies. There are six different profiles. You do not necessarily go by the very strict uh, distribution I mentioned. And yes, the more fingers you use, the faster you are. Uh, no, not a surprise, but that's been shown experimentally. Um, typically, you have some specific uh, uh, duration. We've tried to capture those chunks by trying to find some specific uh, 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 profiles, and that's what we're still uh, in the process of analyzing. There's a huge vari variability among the various uh, subjects that we have in our data sets, and it uh, somehow uh, makes the analysis more difficult. Um, so to come up to the way we would like to analyze this kind of data, 
uh, two types of strategies have been developed. The first one is to try to investigate the dynamic aspect of it, namely taking into account how many backspaces we use when we get it wrong. That's the most difficult way to analyze this. For the time being, we're only investigating at the type of words that have been erased by uh, speakers. And the second type of representation that we're using is trying to build a tabular type of data that repeats uh, all the elements that have been typed, taking into account the final version, the text as uh, planned by the speaker, and that forces us to have huge data sets where we have a specific identification document, identification number for the word, the sentence, and the paragraph. But the idea is also to have the syntactic property associated to the word so that we're able to say we tend to pause, surprise, surprise, at uh, moments where we wouldn't expect us to. So basically, there is on the general trend a uh, tendency to separate subject and predicate uh, as specific locus uh, of elements. Some of the reviewers asked what was the point of uh, analyzing key logs. So there's a tradition of uh, examining key logs. Uh, our colleagues um, in Belgium have shown that they could be done to design investigations of writing strategies, development, uh, writing uh, from different sources, analyzing how live subtitling is done, and of course it's been also used uh, for uh, uh, clinical diagnosis of various uh, uh, features. Uh, more modestly, uh, within the field of the learner corpus research, we're trying to learn more about uh, our learners. There's a history of data collection among learners. The first corpora were gathered with uh, written data by learners. It takes ages to collect the data and to type it. So the second generation is using online data collection. But we don't have any aspect in terms of dynamic. Where does the learner pause? Uh, which is why uh, my colleague in uh, Bremen, Carlos Marcus Carlos, has started using input log for this kind of data. So that's what we are trying to do. We focus on the repairs. Where have they had um, changed the, the, the words uh, about their hesitations reflected in the chunk structures uh, we've mentioned? And it is our hope that at the end of the day, we may save some time analyzing all the data because as a speech scientist it takes about uh, an hour to investigate one minute of speech, so you can see the benefits of this kind of analysis. Um, so um, uh, this is what we try to do um, as such. We probably need to, uh, okay, we would also like to use these key logs for learner analytics. We'd like to know what does a learner do when writing a text and possibly uh, try to retrace the various stages. Um, so uh, trying to wrap up my presentation in connection to the whole theme of the conference, are there any specific uh, connection between uh, the time processing of words? It seems to be that there's an effect on onsets. Is there any specific uh, different status of graphing from words? So we've investigated TH, whether it was in initial position or in final position, even though it may be a morpheme as well, it's not significant as a duration. So it seems to be the case that at least for this uh, graphing in the phonological sense, there's no specific status granted to the remark. It looks like the most important keys for the kind of analysis we perform is the space bar and the backspace. And listening to Martin, it looks like we could have potential evidence of ambisyllabic consonant, which may have a specific treatment. So thank you again for giving me uh, ideas. And uh, so that. <clears throat> Now we'll take questions. Yes. Uh, as a pianist, I know that um, what is very important when uh, what is affecting the piano playing is the gesture. And the gesture starts from the elbow and goes down to the hand. And uh, a different gesture can completely transform a complete 
sentence and uh, all the um, time measurements. Uh, so did you consider recording and investigating the gestures which produce these uh, key logs you obtained? I'd be very tempted to do that. There's an ERC-funded project I discovered after submitting the abstract. It's done on Swedish, and they had the opportunity to do not only monitoring key logs, but also they filmed the typist, and they also recorded uh, motion pictures uh, with uh, um, motion capture uh, devices. And one of the results is what they call the rollover, so the fastest typist of the specific ways of making a certain gesture. And this seems to account for the fact that uh, the, um, some of the fastest typists are unorthodox. They do not follow the standard um, alignment that I've uh, shown. But yes, um, gesture has really been encoded, so that they, the, the data set uh, is in Swedish, but it's freely available. Uh, and it's a very interesting uh, study. So this is where they spotted six different profiles uh, based on these very specific kind of gestures, which I had not the time to, to detail. But it's a very interesting paper. Other questions? If not, uh, let's thank uh, Nicola for his interesting presentation. <laughs>